Hello, and welcome to Flicks in a Six. I'm one of your hosts, Anthony Costanzo, with me, forever and always, the man, the myth. If he were ill, he would be the big sick. Alessandro Bielsi. Say hello, Al. I am fairly large. <laughs> On this week's episode, we're going to talk about some Oscar issues I've had, a preview with the, of the Black Panther, a little story about how Al and I did it wrong, and uh, I break my friend's heart about the DCEU, all before diving into our flick of the week, the big sick. But first, Al, what are we drinking? What are we drinking yeah. that I got all over? Oh, really? Because um, this one wasn't too... I mean, like, I don't know. The head on my beer is very reasonable, very manageable. So, oh, no. It, it, user error. It, was more, it was more me trying to make just the, just the right sound effects. Like, I feel like the sound effects came through really good this time. But um, I was using a clunky bottle opener. There's a lot of clinks. When I, when I popped the top off, I, it sprayed. It was, it was the whole thing. So you achieved excellence, but it came at a cost. Trade-offs. <laughs> uh, so we're drinking uh, Rogue Mocha Porter, which I accidentally referred to uh, my cousin Dennis, who is a big fan of the show. Hey, Dennis. Um, he texted me yesterday asking, well, about the time you guys listen to this, it'll be a few days later, but he texted me yesterday and was like, hey, what was that uh, Rogue beer that you guys did on the podcast? I was like, oh, Mocha Porter. He's like, uh... no, it's He's like, no, it's hazelnut brown. I was like, and I was, and the funny thing is like, he literally texted me or I read the message and I was standing right next to my collection of beers to be done. <laughs> on the show, but I forgot that we didn't actually do this one yet. Right. So I was like, oh yeah, that's right. Like it's been like two months or three months since we did the episode he's talking about, but it's only like two episodes ago. <laughs> but was that a test? Why did he know the answer before he asked you? <laughs> well, because I, I, when he texted me, when I actually saw the message, it was like five minutes difference. Got it. Uh, and by the t- like, I guess he was like pulling into like the beer place right as he was sending me the text. So by the time he <laughs> got in there, he saw it and recognized it before I like like at basically the same time I was texting him. And I was like, oh yeah, we definitely did do that one. We're gonna do Mocha Porter like this week or next week. That's <laughs> my confusion. Oh my god. Ready to ready to try this sucker? Ready uh, to, uh, to get this yes. Again? Cheers. Hmm. That's tasty. I mean, they have uh, all of these rogue beers. I, I, you know, it's just it's just how it is, right? Like where each brand, there's like a. I feel like there's a certain taste that you can you can find throughout, and I like rogues, so. Their beers, I feel like, just work for me. No, it wasn't a it wasn't a um, negative criticism. It was just me identifying um, this is a particularly dry porter, which can be a good thing. There's they trend towards quite dry or quite sweet. Mm-hmm. Uh, for instance, the one that I made that we definitely didn't do on the show, and you drank but don't remember. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I thought it came out really well. Everyone who I who I did talk to who did remember drinking the beer, you well, as soon as I said it, you're like, no, no, I drank the beer like weeks ago. Don't remember what it tastes like. <laughs> um, I must have that, another one. <laughs> that one was on the sweeter side. Well, hopefully I'll be able to see you soon, and I'll bring you an- yeah. another one of those along with my new beer, which will be ready to drink in a few days. Excellent. Um, is that going to be our, is that going to be our beer for annihilation? Uh, <laughs> uh, it's not that strong. It was about six and a half percent. So. Okay. Okay. Um, no, this is good though. It's funny though. The coffee is very strong on the nose, but I'm not getting a ton of it in the taste. Mm-hmm. Also, like two seconds before I took my first sip of this, I just slammed back a big sip of like protein uh, <laughs> shake. So, but thankfully that was like it's a vanilla protein, so it's like not a very strong flavor on its own. Yeah, I barely taste the mocha. Is it kind of sits on my palate? I taste it, but I don't taste it strong notes of it as I'm taking sips of it. But it right. smells delicious. Yeah, the uh, that I feel like that lingering bitter taste resembles like that mocha flavor. Yes, a bit. Um, let's see what it says on the bottle here. As with most rogue beers, it's a dude drinking a beer on the front. <laughs> Classic. Um, <laughs> Raising his fist to the heavens. <laughs> There's nothing really to go by here on the bottle itself. It just says Dare Risk Dream, which I think is just kind of their generic. Why don't you just 
ramble for a few seconds. Let me go see if I have the box over in the other room. Okay. Well, we touched on uh, we touched a little bit here on bottle art. One of my one of my favorites. Um, this one, this one in particular, like he's got a little, he's got his little rogue hat fist up in the air, and he's uh, and he's he's dr- drinking his beer. Hairy arms. This gentleman, this gentleman has some some pretty hairy arms. Uh, almost almost to the knuckles. Would have been would have been funnier if it had uh, if he had hobbit hands, which is a uh, not not unlike the hobbit feet that I have that Al has pointed out before. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Well, because I really don't see your feet that often, other than like the like one time a year we get to go to the beach together. It, 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 what was the was it like the night before my wedding, and we were drinking the scotch, and you're like, "You have hobbit feet." <laughs> yeah, I think so. That, that, that was great. That was great. Um, what you got? Okay. What did you find on the box? Ruddy brown in color, a bittersweet balance of malt and hops, yet a surprisingly light and refreshing refreshing taste. It has twelve ingredients. Churro, that's their base malt. Munich malt, C120, which I don't know what that is exactly, but it's going to... Oh, I guess that could be Crystal 120, um, which would give it some of that caramel-y flavor, and it'll contribute to some of this very dark, lovely color. Okay. Um, chocolate malt, black malt, Kiln Coffee, and Rogue Farms Dare, that's a trademark of theirs, I guess, and Risk Malt, that's another trademarked malt. It has Rogue Farms Rebel and Liberty Hops, and it's made with free-range coastal water and Pac-Man yeast. Sweet. 5.6 ABV, 47 IBUs. It's a tasty beer. It's, uh, it, it, it's real dark. There's no not not a lot of light getting through that one. Yeah, no, this one is... Um, oh, I was just about to say, wow, that's kind of like a cool reddish hue. Uh... It's not. Uh, what happened was I forgot that my uh, keyboard is backwards, right? <laughs> bouncing off the side of the... <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Well done. As soon as I picked up the glass and realized that the color immediately went away and there was none of that red anymore, I was like, yep, yeah, that's right. Um, is it... Is yours very cold? You... It's fairly cold. It came out of the fridge like okay. five minutes. I probably should have let it warm up a little bit. I was gonna say, mine is not, and it's something that I've uh, I've been trying to do more with these these darker, heavier ones is like to is to give it some time out of the fridge first, and I I feel like I enjoy them more. Careful with the darker, heavier thing, because this is incredibly dark, but it's not heavy. This is a very light beer. Mm. It um, it doesn't feel light to me. It's pretty light. I think I mean, I just probably associate the flavors with how I feel about it. That's why I said be careful about it because a lot of people make that association, and it's not it's not always wrong. But mm. like Guinness is a very light beer, even though it is the darkest. Bitterness. I would agree with that. I feel opposite about this one though. This one's it's definitely not as light as that, um, but on a scale of light to heavy, this I would say trends towards the lighter side. And I think I said that on here actually too. Surprisingly light and refreshing taste. Yes. Mm. Um. I would like to do more of these rogue beers. I've I haven't come across one that I disliked. I don't think. Um, they have a million of them because they do so many one-off beers. Right. Uh, we've done two or three on the show. Yeah. Do we, we have the, another one? What did we do? We did the nut brown. Yeah, the hazelnut brown. That was one Dennis asked about. Right. Which I. That was a delicious beer. Oh my god, that one was so good. Let's just do that one again. <laughs> Let's just do that whole episode again. Was that Star Wars? <laughs> what, 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 were we, what were we watching with that one? I think it was Thor. Okay. Hey, hey let's do that one again. Let's get Thor. <laughs> we'll get it uh, Get it when it comes out next week. And, you know, sit down. We'll do a little commentary over it and watch. Listen, uh, drink that beer. I'm, I'm all for it. Well, you know what we could do is, you know, we've always talked about incorporating more beer into the show and we can just do a new beer every show and also that beer every show oh my god yes yes (laughs) delicious um we get back to doing our marathon recordings it's gonna be problematic yeah for sure that's like (laughs) 1700 beers um (laughs) that's how math works right so moving on uh this this beer it's it's a winner we haven't we haven't had a lot of losers on this show uh, yeah, there's been a couple that I wasn't a huge fan of, a couple you weren't a huge fan of. Then there was that uh, one that we both weren't a fan of. <laughs> which one was that? It was like a Keegan Ailes one. Oh, yeah. That wasn't that good. That was a disappointment. Yeah. And they were those... Also, also the 
the salty sour beer from Six Point. Salty Remember sour. We, we did the two Six Point beers during the overarching superhero episode. One of them was an IPA, and one of them was a sour beer. Yes. That was made with sea salt. Did and, did we? Dislike it at first, though, and then it grew on us. <laughs> or... No, I think it's the other way around. I think we okay. Both and we're like, oh, this is kind of interesting, and then we like drank the rest of it, and we're like, mm. I'm done with this beer. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's ch- let's check back in a little bit later on this one. Um, that bitter taste on the end of my tongue is uh was okay at first, and it's starting to annoy me. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of a break, and let and we'll check back in. Well, you probably drank it too warm because I, that's what I was realizing, and it was something I did when I gave my porter to someone. The guy who uh, owns the shop where I buy my stuff. Yeah. Um, so especially anytime I ask him for help on a recipe, I usually make my own recipe and have him one one over it in case I did anything that was going to be really crazy or bad. Like, oh no no, don't do that, you know. <laughs> right. Um. So I gave him one of those and I brought it to him and it was in a. I bring like a one of those cold packs so that I can bring the yeast back and it stays cold because I don't usually brew that day. Um, and I bring, I brought him the beer and it cold. And the first thing he did after he poured us from the bottle was he took the glass and it helped because we split a 12 ounce. This is 12 ounce each for us. He took the glass and you just rotate it in his hand to just warm it up a couple of degrees. Mm-hmm. Um, which is what I've been doing as I drink this. So it's kind of opened up the flavor a little bit more as we're, as we're going on. I'm tasting a little bit more of the coffee on the palate now, but okay. you probably, your starting point was probably too warm if it wasn't in the fridge at all. Yeah. Yeah, that's what was the case. I mean, I was keeping my beers cold in the garage, and then t- t- today it decided to be seventy degrees. <laughs> so well, it's warmer tomorrow. So yeah, well, they've since moved to the fridge, but this one didn't make it. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see how the next ones are. Those will be those will be chilled. I'll take them out a little before our recording. So first topic for today are are some of my issues with the Oscars. Um. This happens to me every year. There's going to be there's a handful of movies that I watch and I go, "What in the goddamn hell were they thinking when they nominated this movie?" Now yeah, I miss I miss your little Oscars night that you have. We're, Remember we're we do that in Hoboken? Yeah, well, Kim and I do it every year. People don't show up all the time, but we're going to be here with onion dip and chips. That is how that night works. <laughs> I feel like I haven't received an invite the last couple of years. Um. Maybe not. Well, we're going to do it this year. Cool. So. Well, we did like a whole thing. You, Michael Warren had a couple of people. You had a couple of people. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's been, it's been my thing forever. And uh, Kim and I have always, always enjoyed doing it. So we'll definitely be doing it this year. And this year, so we make a, we make an honest effort every year to see every best picture nominee. Right. That's what we want to do. Never, that doesn't usually happen. We don't usually see all of them. As of tomorrow night, we will have seen every best picture nominee. I'm very excited about that. Oh, you and Kim? Yeah. I was like, because I'm lagging a little bit. But no, hopefully we're... I will have seen Lady Bird by the time we speak next. So Yeah, and you should you definitely should. Um so that this is kind of what I want to get at. So Lady Bird, we can which we'll we can dive dive into a little deeper when you've seen it and we do a, an actual episode on it. But um I'm gonna give you my, my short review of this movie. It's a perfectly okay movie. Um on on the cusp of good. Like it's 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 I, I didn't mind watching it. I enjoyed my time with it. It was funny at times. It had a an okay story. Nothing to write home about, in my opinion. And when a movie like that gets an Oscar nominee for Best Picture, I go, "Why?" <laughs> and and that and that that about like the movie ended and it was like good, but I went into it with the lens of, "Oh, this is going to be great, right? This is going to be great because it's a Best Picture nominee." That was false. When you did, when you did that why thing, my default for that is always. Ryan Reynolds in his cameo in Harold and Kumar. <laughs> <Yeah>. Marijuana. Why? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have marijuana in this hospital. Um, yeah, it, it's 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 good. I would say see it, and we'll, we'll we should you should watch it, and we'll do an episode on it because there's there's stuff to talk about there. Um, but I don't think it's a best picture nominee. In my opinion, it wouldn't be on the list. Um, however, when you compare it to this other film that is on the list, it is. It's the winner because the Phantom <laughs> Thread is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. <laughs> it's funny because a lot of people seem to like that movie. The thing is, I I I read a Guess lot of reviews afterwards. Here because I realized you kind of like spiked for a second there. He said Phantom Thread for anyone. Phantom Thread. Is. I 
knew what he was going to say, but yeah. I didn't actually understand him when he just said it right now. <laughs> so here's the problem. Um, I, I, I'm. It's okay. Everybody has their own opinion, right? I just, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to see the opinion of somebody that enjoyed this because I, I read a lot of reviews of folks that liked it and what they liked about it and the things that they liked about it are specifically things that I didn't <laughs> like, like I just didn't, I didn't care for that. I didn't care for the story. I didn't care for what they were trying to do and what they were saying in it. And uh, by the end of it, I feel like Kim and I just looked at each other and we went, what? <laughs> like, wh why? How? What? This has no place being, and and I I encourage you, <laughs> I encourage you to watch it so that we can talk about it. But this movie bothered the hell out of me, <laughs> and it's it's gonna it's I uh, I posted my one reaction review of this movie on Instagram, which is a series that I would like to continue doing for all movies that I see. Yeah, I got the sneak preview of that review, and uh, I was uh, a little annoyed. I was a little annoyed, <laughs> and then I saw Boss Baby. <laughs> I was like, this movie. This movie deserves to be nominated for Best Animated Picture. <laughs> and yeah, yes, it is. It, it's I up there. I couldn't get on board with that one. I don't know. I didn't see it. It just, I, I don't know. It was silly. But um, it, it, I just I just had to, like, I don't have a lot to say about it because I don't want to, I can't go too deep into it without you having seen the movie and without us being able to like, go back and forth on it a bit. I do think that you need to watch it when you have two hours that you don't want back because they're not coming back. My time is precious. Um, then you're, but then you're probably not going to watch this, or if you, or if you do, it's gonna it, it's gonna damage our relationship. <laughs> no, the thing is, I'll probably see it eventually. It just may not be a time to do an episode that's relevant on it. That that's fine. Maybe we'll do a, a best of the worst at some point, <laughs> and and things that we've accumulated over time, we can just go back and be like, what the hell? And that'll just be it. We'll drink a beer. We'll say the title of the movie. Say what the hell, and move on to the next one. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's how that series will go. Uh, this all, so it, within a couple of days, we saw a handful of the remaining movies that we had to see. We saw Lady Bird, we saw Phantom Thread, then I, uh, then we, we, we went to see, um, The Post, and this is your long-awaited movie pass check-in. Oh, nice. <laughs> Couldn't use it, it was at AMC. Uh, <laughs> wait, it's not working by you now? Uh, you can't use it at AMC as far as I understand. Oh, because when... I remember hearing that news was a month or two ago, but it was just specific AMCs. Oh, well, I didn't use it at this AMC because it didn't show up in my app. So I'm assuming that it's not available. Oh, because I remember because people were saying, oh, like, fuck AMC. They're not. And AMC put out a statement and said, no, we are fine with people using it as long as our individual theaters are okay with using it. And it was, like, just ones in big cities, it seemed like, in New York City, in Boston, that were disallowing it. Interesting. Maybe that's, like, old news now, so may maybe that changed since then. I haven't seen it, but, like, I saw a big story about it over the course of a couple of days, like, a month or two ago, and it was, like, the story was, like, oh, five particular AMCs in the Northeast stopped taking it. Oh, interesting. So, I don't, it's possible, so the way I don't... Or movie pass stopped working with it. I forget which end of the... Right. Well, I will say, to the way that it works, you have to check in with the MoviePass app, which activates your card for 30 minutes so that you can buy the ticket. Yeah. And you have to do that when you're within a certain mile range of the theater. And the it, the theater didn't show up. Huh. So, um, it could be that this is one of those theaters. Uh, so, I didn't get, didn't get to use it. But um, I feel like I used it a few weeks back that we didn't touch on, and it still worked. So... Even if it even if it works one in every like five times I go to the movie, it's still probably paying for itself, which is pretty great. <laughs> so movie pass, way to be. Really, oh, it worked with Greatest Showman. Worked great. No problem. Also, the theater by me is the greatest theater ever. So <laughs> there's there's yeah. that. Um but uh here's so back back to the Oscar issues for a second. I I haven't done any research on this, and I'm curious. I would like to dig dig into it a little bit and find out. But I'm curious, what's the earliest a movie has been released in the year and been a contender in the Oscars? You're talking about because Get Out came out literally a year ago. Um, Get Out is is when I is one of the ones that I think about that is like is probably is like old compared to 
how it normally runs because we got into this Oscar season and we're at a, this mad dash to see these movies that are nominated for Best Picture because none of them came out earlier. And it's almost like as if they forgot about the movies that happened. I, and I know that's not always the case. And I know that's a, a lot of things are held back for this season when they're expected to be that way. But things that happened in the past throughout the year, like they, they, they seem to fall by the wayside a little bit. And I was surprised to see Dunkirk and Get Out getting that recognition being or like because Dunkirk was still cl- was closer than Get Out, but still, it was in that you know slightly distant. I've seen stories about that in the past few years. That's why the that's the reason a lot of these places, a lot of these like production companies, release them all at the same time at the end of the year mm-hmm. because they want it fresh in your mind. They're afraid that if they release it at any other time, it will be forgotten about in the hype. Right. Um. And Dunkirk is in the weird no man's land where it's not a full calendar year behind. Like Get Out came out last February, which is a month or so after you know the year starts, right? You know, it's, right. it's everything. You know, you know, it's still the same calendar year, but it came out ten months before all these other movies. Basically, Dunkirk was in the summer. It kind of split the difference between the two. But that one, people are going to remember because it was such a such like an institution, right? Like it was such like a big cinematic moment. But the thing is, Get Out was as well. So that is working in its favor. It kind of has the right cards playing right. For together, right? I mean, Get Out had a couple of revivals too, though. It came back in theaters multiple times. Did it? It did, but I think it's because of the recognition that it was getting and giving you the opportunity to see it on the screen. I know they just announced... It either just happened or it's like last weekend or it's happening this weekend. Like it was like a day or two. Like it's going to be in a select theaters again, just yeah. as kind of a reminder. Right. Maybe even available free to see. Oh, interesting. Well, it's on HBO, I think. Might be, but like, I think that's I mean, where I watched it. I mean, in theaters, like it was like it was like a limited run in like select theaters for like a Friday and Saturday or something like that. Right. And it may have even been available free. I, I forget. I remember. I didn't read like the story. I just kind of saw like the headline. I mean, it's interesting because I'm, I'm I'm very curious. I'd I'd love to go back and and take a look at that list and then compare it to big movies that came out those years. Like a list of movies that were, were super early on in the year that made it to the Oscars, and then compare that to other movies that have that maybe we love, right? That we feel are like whoa. And never even got a nod because they came out because I feel like they came out earlier in the year. I'm I'm just curious what the what the relationship is there. I don't know. If, I'm sure somebody else has done the thought work there, and I'd I'd love to dig into it a little bit and talk about it more here. I feel like that would be an interesting topic. Yeah, I mean, in another year, no, maybe not even. Dunkirk is a worthy choice. Like, if it won, people would be upset with it, but they shouldn't be. Here's the thing with Dunkirk. Um, I think I'm on board with its nomination for director. Yeah, I mean that too. But best picture, I wouldn't pick it over some of these other ones that I've seen. I don't know. It's a pretty excellent movie. It's just very different than all the other ones. It is, but I think I there's just something you know. What it, it's also I. It's hard to take my opinion on that because I'm biased towards. Chris Nolan, I love I love his work. I love the way that he does things. So mm-hmm. when he does something, it's I mean I, I will I will call it like I see it. Uh, I did not like his movie uh, Insomnia. I never saw it. It's I did not care for that. And actually, it it I was it was upsetting to watch a movie and of his and not be thrilled by it because everything else is just such a high caliber that that I watched that and I was just like ah this just doesn't do it for me. But um, the, he's the work that he does on that movie is is amazing. I love the direction of that movie, but I don't think it's a. I don't know. It's just the, this as a story and as as a whole, I'm okay with it. Not I would I would have actually been okay with it not being nominated alongside some of these other ones. See, I feel like three billboards is gonna win. But honestly, I think the post and get out were better movies. You saw Get Out? Yeah, I told you. I saw oh. it like when it came oh, out. Oh, you saw oh right, that's right. I'm sorry, you saw it all the way back then. 
Um, yeah, I the, the post was awesome. Um, three billboards. Yeah, uh, the oh man, sorry that we we should get into the post at one point, but that was that movie was 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 really well done. Like just a great, such a great cast of characters. Just it's so awesome. But uh, for me, the the two front runners are three billboards and call me by your name. Those are probably the like the two most likely to win. I'm not really all that into call me by your name. Um, three billboards is good, but there's there's flaws in the movie, which we sure. we talked about yeah. uh, last week. Um, I I just I think that the post and get out are better movies. I just don't think either of them have a very good chance to win. Right. Oh, man, Get Out was fun. I want to watch. I want to watch that again. Uh, so the, moving the on. Is, that one's too different than the Oscar, your typical best picture movies. Yeah, it's just so different. But I, that's almost kind of a, in my mind, a reason why it should win because Three Billboards, Going by Your Name, um, there's another one in here, The Phantom Thread. Like those movies scream Oscar bait to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And even the post, too, to be honest. Get out and Dunkirk are the outliers. They're the ones that I'd be they're, they're they're doing something different, you know what I mean? Right. All the other movies are kind of the same movie. I mean, I know they're about wildly different things, but like they're all the kind of depressing ish character study movies, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well that we're at a, a point where there's uh, out of all these movies, I have uh, Darkest Hour I'm seeing tomorrow. Um, it's the last chance I'm going to get to see it. Uh, yeah, I want to see that. I never got around to it. It's not in theater near me. Yeah, it's playing at like a a one off thing near me. So we're gonna we're gonna go there tomorrow, to, and that'll be the last one of the best pictures for us to see. But so far, if any of the movies won except Lady Bird and Phantom Thread, I would be satisfied. <laughs> so. I mean, it's those are pretty good odds. So I'm pretty, I'm sure I'm, I think I'm going to be happy with <laughs> with the outcome, hopefully. Uh, but we'll see where it goes. And this this kind of leads me though into the next piece, which was I read this article about uh, Black Panther and it being and is it going to be a legit like Oscar contender next year? And probably not. Cause it's so fucking far away. <laughs> that well, that's and I was going to say there's there's going to be two things there. One, no, I, most likely because of that. That's how. That's where this all started. And my thought process on that is I I don't remember how old the movie has been. But like you said, Get Out was was a while back, which works again, right? You said it was February last year. It's around. Sure. The same, it's a, that would make it around the same time frame. But it's just mm-hmm. I feel like that doesn't happen often, and it also hasn't happened with a. Um, we're not, we haven't seen, I feel like, a, a superhero movie get crazy recognition at the Oscars. Well, the only other thing that was close to it was the Oscar nomination process changed because Dark Knight got snubbed. Mm. How, how, how did that go? I don't remember that. It, the, it used to be only five Best Picture nominees. It didn't make the five. Everyone lost their shit, so they explained, expanded it to ten. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense. Oh, man, that movie was so good. <laughs> I was watching that today. I had a, a fun fun little uh, exchange with um, Kel, friend of the show, uh, <laughs> with that. Just some stupid little scene that was in it that like, he loves the movie, I love the movie, you love that movie. Like It doesn't bear getting into. There's a big explanation for not a great payoff unless you're in on the joke. But it was just one of the things that I heard, and I was like, I never – realized that line was exactly as it was and it mirrored one of those stupid little inside jokes me and him have so <laughs> I just, like clipped a video and sent it to him today and he was like cracking up <laughs> and I've seen that movie a million times and you've probably seen it more than me and my appreciation of it does not diminish seeing it a million times no it's that movie holds up from the minute it starts off with the swell of the music and the, we did a you know go back and listen to our episode on it's the most listened to episode that we've done is the Dark Knight episode, and it continues to get hits weekly. So if you haven't seen that, listen to that one. Check it out. We enjoyed ourselves while we watched, while we listened to that, while we recorded that one. Sorry. Um, th- this there's this incredible box set out that I'm really I just I need to pick up. Um, there's a Christopher Nolan 4K box set, and 
in this box set, it includes the only movies you'll ever need. <laughs> it has Dunkirk, Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, The Dark Knight Rises, Inception, Interstellar, and The Prestige. Come on! <laughs> that is a that is just a powerhouse. Can we, can we just review that box set? <laughs> That's something that I would marathon through. <laughs> it's a pretty pretty excellent little collection. So it's not all of his stuff, it's just like the selected works. It's like Everything except a couple of movies that they're just like, eh, we, we've honestly it would, and it. I love Batman, and I liked The Dark Knight Rises more than others. But the fact that Memento is not in there, I would be like, okay, take Dark Knight Rises out, put Memento in, leave Insomnia off because I don't want to watch it again. <laughs> and I'm pretty surprised that Memento's not on there. Although I saw it the one time with you, and then I just happened to like, I was just it's one of those times where it's like, I think I was watching a recording and like that I had on like the DVR, and it was like kind of late, but it was like. Okay, like I'm not really ready to go up to bed, but I'm not right. ready to commit to watching another hour or two long thing. So let me just see what's on TV for half an hour or whatever. And I threw on Memento for a little bit, and it was like maybe 20 minutes into the movie. And I was like, man, this is a good movie, but God, it depresses the shit out of me. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a rough watch, especially like because every, no matter how many times I see it, I somehow forget certain parts or like not that – and it takes a minute for me to remember them again. And as they happen, it's just it's just a gut punch. Yeah, it's heartbreaking stuff. Um, but the well, I think the reason it's not in here, I mean, it's this is a it's a 4K collection. Like the, the every movie on that list makes sense that you would want it in 4K. You know, absurd high def. Yeah, Memento is not a visual. Right, and movie. it does it doesn't need to be. Weirdly enough, though, Memento is the first movie that I saw in 1080p. <laughs> it was just like one of those one of those movies that when Blu-rays came out. It was in that set of movies that was released in blue on Blu-ray. I was like, huh. and that was the first time I saw it, and I loved it. But uh, that's uh, that's that's a that is a collection that I would like. Um, do you have any any quick notes on a, a quick preview of the Black Panther before we uh, we do our episode on it? That's right. I saw it this weekend with uh, my brother. Uh, very good movie. I didn't think it quite lived up to the hype that everyone's been giving it of like it's the most amazing superhero movie since Dark Knight. I, I, I would not put it in the same class as that movie. Okay. But it's really good. I definitely go see it. Yeah. Doubly so if you're a Marvel fan. Although it's largely limited from the MCU stuff. Like it doesn't feel really? super important to what's going on. And I think they're kind of developing a trend of that because um, the last few movies that they've done have all been really good and all of them have kind of mostly not been super important to the thread of the Avengers. Mm. Um, Guardians 2, Thor Ragnarok, and Black Panther, none of those are really super important to where the Avengers is going. Interesting. I wonder... I, well, the, a couple of those that you mentioned, though, like you said Ragnarok, this one, and what else did you say? Guardians 2. Well, uh, Guardians 2 less so, but the other two, I wonder, like, they, they, I feel like they were they were taking a gamble, right? With with Thor, the latest Thor, they, they changed the formula, and they matched Guardians, and it worked, and they knocked it out of the park. With the Black Panther, it's a, I feel like it's a less in the spotlight character, and they're, like, testing the waters and seeing how well it goes. And all of this is happening before an inevitable, like, reset of the universe. <laughs> well, the testing of the waters, though, really come with, it came with introducing him in Civil War, right? Yeah. Because he didn't have to carry it on his shoulders mm -hmm. um, as we introduced him. But they made him compelling, and you want to follow up with it and see where it goes, which was great. And, you know, they're awesome at that. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, it's like, I mean, apart from the obvious tie-in of... Everett Ross, Martin Freeman's character being in it, and Ulysses Claw being in it, and then mm -hmm. uh, it picks up about a week after the end of Civil War. Oh, I didn't realize it was that quick. Yeah, it's not really a spoiler, because like, it's like literally the beginning of the movie. Okay. There. He's watching the news, and they're like, oh, a week ago, Wakanda lost its leader, T'Chaka. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's like basically... They wrapped up those things, and he's coming home to have his coronation as king. You know what I mean? 
Right. So, yeah, no, it takes place right basically a week or two after Civil War to play, or like at least that's the starting point of the movie. Um, so, yeah, the, that, like those three connection points, Everett Ross, who we met in Civil War, new acquaintance of T'Challa, and Ulysses Claw, who we met in Avengers Age of Ultron, is in this as well. Those are really your only, and the, the fact that they have vibranium, that's, that's really all... There's a couple of throwaway lines here and there, you know. It's the events of it. What happens with all of it in the whole course of the movie doesn't affect the Avengers storyline. Interesting. And that's not breaking news because they've talked about it in the news. Mm-hmm. There's no Soul Stone, or not Soul Stone. There's no Infinity Stone in this movie. Vibranium is the MacGuffin in this movie. So interesting. I'm excited. I'm I'm really excited to see it. I well, it is obviously. a really good movie. It's I would say definitely top five of the Marvel movies. And it very well may be top three. Ooh, I'm still it's gonna nice. take me a little time to figure out. I just uh, people are treating it like it's like stands alone in the Marvel movies, and like it's, it's Black Panther and everything else. I would disagree with that. Okay, but it definitely belongs up at or near the top of the list. Sweet. Uh, that see, I'm gl- happy to hear that because that that's just. I'm, I was already excited to see it, and hearing that review from somebody that has pretty much, you know, the exact same movie taste as me <laughs> makes it makes me even more excited. So, also we'll, for you, for you Walking Dead fans, um, Denai Guerrero, she kills it. In this. She's awesome. That's she's great. Trained. I so, don't know how much like actual she was going to be given to do and say in this movie. She has a pretty big role. <laughs> we'll probably be doing this next week. Provide I should be able to see it by then. Um, and then we'll be we'll we'll, we'll uh, queue that up for the next one, provided I get to it. So there's another uh, item that I put on my list here. Things to chat about real quick. This isn't a long one. Um, what well, something we did wrong? You and me, yeah. we we went on an adventure together. It was yeah, you, you didn't me. tell me actually. You just told no. me that there was something that we did wrong. You haven't actually told me what this is yet. So I'm no. here for this for the first time as well. You and I, and my old roommate, we had our sit down. We went. We marathoned the extended Lord of the Rings trilogy. Okay, there's a gentleman on Twitter by the name of Frog Croakley who put together a 15 course meal that goes with the trilogy. <laughs> so you want to do it next weekend? No. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna be honest with you. If I never saw Lord of the Rings again, I don't know how upset I would be. I watched a little bit of Fellowship the other day. So let, let me let me just run this list down real quick because there's some real there's some gems on it. <laughs> Since we did the extended trilogy, I have done another trilogy watch, and I've seen all three of them at least ten times. Since You're out of control. Them. You're just simply out of control. <laughs> I think you know what it is. It's safe to say you enjoy those movies more than me, which is fine. I mean, that's yeah, that's probably an understatement. So. Let, let's you know, get let's just get like into this quote, this list of line. you know what so say like the quote line for line in movies. Mm. Um, not only do I know probably seventy percent of the lines in those three movies, I That's know the musical cues. Oh my god! Okay, you're gonna well then you'll you'll be able to tell me some of these items on the list don't actually say what the thing is, but it's lined up with a point in the movie. So I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna read them to you real quick. Number one on the list is tea and cake. Pretty obvious when we're gonna get that. Yep. Number two is cheese and jams. Number cheese. three is apple, and then in parentheses, thrown. <laughs> yeah, it's when Aragorn throws the apple in there. <laughs> right. Number four is bacon and mushrooms. Number five is probably sausages. <laughs> With three question marks. Number six is lemon bread. Number seven, stew and taters. Number eight, this is one of my favorites, golem fish. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine now, is... Do you have to prepare the golem fish by I... smacking it on the table, or... <laughs> the rafting pool is nice and cool. Yeah! <laughs> the juicy sweet! <laughs> uh, so, after the golem fish, number nine, orc power drink. <laughs> number ten, looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. <laughs> Number 11, salted pork and preserves. Uh, number 12, hail to the victorious dead. I don't know what that reference is. Um, that's uh, the end of the 
I guess that's part of the end of the Battle of uh, Helm's Deep. Although okay. the Sultan Port is also after... Hel- so I'm, as I was listening to some of these, I realized some of these I don't think are actually lined up with the moments in the movies. Sure. Because um, the bacon and mushrooms probably should come before the apple being thrown. Mm, interesting. Um, yeah, but it's a little too early in the day, maybe, for, for that. I don't know. Hard possible, to say. But I love the salt pork. John Reese davies just going, did you say salted pork? <laughs> <laughs> uh, number 13 is Denethor's Grim Dinner. Nice. No, I, mean, four- I, don't, I don't really like eating tomatoes raw, so I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Mm. Number 14 is Grand. I'm not sure what that is. Grand is the... Oh, God. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I hate myself a little bit for knowing this. Um, Grand is the huge boar-shaped thing that they use to break down the gates of Minas Tirith. Oh, my God. That is really funny. Okay. So, <laughs> so it's a pig roast. It's, it's, on two separate occasions, I've had a conversation with Caleb about that specific topic. Oh, my God. Uh, number 15 <laughs> is Petite Fours. Is what? Petite Fours. I'm not sure what that is. Okay, I'm not sure either. Just curious. Uh, but yeah, so, some of those some of those are pretty solid. I was, a, I was a big fan. Then I realized all we did was brew beer, and I think we ate Chinese food. We are, maybe we maybe a breakfast sandwich. It was like a 15 hour day, so it's, I... it's all a blur. There, there was, was pizza involved in that. No, there was definitely pizza that day. Was there pizza? There was definitely pizza. I'm sure there was something else as well, but there was definitely pizza that day. Okay, fair, fair. But uh, yeah, so we 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 did it wrong. We didn't plan. We didn't plan for the thirty-seven hours of movie that we were gonna watch. <laughs> but we could have, and uh, this guy proves it. So, but well, I still think the worst part of the whole planning of that was you guys deciding to drive an hour and a half to Hoboken at one thirty in the morning. Probably. When we have like thirty-seven beds in this house. Probably, probably the worst decision there. Um, the last piece that I want to touch on before we get into our movie of the week is uh, I had this and it's just just because uh, it's it's fresh in my mind because it, it just happened before the show. I was uh, talking with my buddy Jay and he was asking me about Wonder Woman and Justice League because he just he finally just saw them and he was catching up. And J- Jay's a DC fan. Uh, he, he loves Batman. He lo- loves Batman like I do. Uh, he's got. He he actually is probably more in tune with the actual comics for other characters than I am because I've I've really ever only focused on Batman and DC. Which did you get him a Batman cufflink? Was that the one that I me and him snapped off of him at the wedding? Um, no, I was Batman. That's uh, right. He, he was. was he, he was dead. He was Deadpool. Deadpool. Okay. Um, so. Uh, he was asking me questions about it and he was asking me what he missed because he said it was the first time he watched it. And I said, actually, I've only watched it uh, them both once. Uh, and he was a little disappointed in that. He's like, but you're my DC guy. And we started talking a little bit about it. And I was explaining to him how, well, the whole DCEU is, is it's, it's just, it's borked. The whole thing, it's just, it's just broken. And he was like, why? And I said, because the people at the top, including Zack Snyder, just drove it into the ground. <laughs> And he he was like, "Don't say this." And I was like, "I'm sorry to bring this. I'm sorry to make you understand what's happening." Now it's it's very sad. And he, was, he was really upset. And I told him they've already. I'm pretty sure it's official. They've already canceled the Batman, right? Um, I don't know because they've changed. I don't. I don't know. They've changed their minds like 16 times. Right. Like, so no, nothing. We rewrote the script. We picked a new director. So ben last... Affleck is going to direct it. He's not going to direct it. He's going to be in it. He's not going to be in it. Well, last the last things that I heard were that that movie was done and was canceled, and that the Flashpoint movie was put on hold. And I don't know if anything has changed since the last thing I read. But I was telling him this: like these things are in flux because there's no faith in where they're going with it or how well it's going to do, and it's all a mess. And he's like, "Don't say this to me." And he's like, "He's like, we don't need another Batman movie." He's like, "I know his origin story. We get it." And I was like, "You know what? I agree with you." But. Uh, and then he was like, we should get a Batman Beyond movie. I was like, that would be great. The problem is they're going to have to distance themselves completely from this current situation they've got going on. Well, and there's no better way to get into a Batman Beyond movie than to just say, all of that happened like 80 years ago. It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or just ignore it. Just flat out ignore it. Yeah, I mean, Flash had, what, like six or seven different directors, and then it was rebranded as Flashpoint, and yeah. then we had a brief window where we all were able to enjoy the idea of, I always forget his fucking name from the guy who plays Negan, um, Jeffrey Dean Miller. 
as Morgan. Batman in Flashpoint, and then that was basically quietly taken out back and shot. So, yeah. like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess we're going to still get the actual Aquaman movie because I'm pretty sure they finished making it. See, that's the that's another one I'm wor- I'm curious about is if we are going to get it. I mean, like, they literally finished shooting the right. movie. It I'm would be silly sure. if, depending on how much money they would, more, how much money they would have to put in more to finish this up, like and get it out there with you know marketing costs and all that stuff. I'd be curious, but the thing is that, like, I think that basically will finish. Like, let's just end up with them killing the DCEU and just having Patty Jenkins make a Wonder Woman two, and like those two will just be the end of this right weird chapter. Right, it's such a shame though because that oh, that was so good, and for that. For that to be mixed up in this tangled web of nonsense is just, well, just well, really unfortunate. Shazam and Black oh, yeah. So but whatever. Just gonna be standalone things now. Who knows? It's a mess. Um, well, I, but I know they are because like they're just beginning to shoot Shazam now. Like they made a big deal a couple months ago about signing Zachary Levi to play the main character. Like just saw something like two weeks ago about how he's in like got himself into ridiculous, ridiculous shape for this movie. Which is funny that if he got super jacked, as they're saying, because he was such like a doughy, dweeby guy on Chuck, and mm. that was kind of part of like the allure of his character. <laughs> like to picture him now as being like, no, I'm really, he's a tall dude, so he has room to put like serious muscle on his frame. But just picturing Zach and Levi as like a jacked superhero is really odd. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. But uh, explaining that to him though was just like really sad. It was like telling. It was like telling a kid, there's no Santa. Like, uh, I felt like I was ripping his little heart out, and I, it was just horrible. It was horrible. <laughs> and as, I, as I'm saying it, I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, <laughs> I don't understand either. <laughs> it was so sad. But uh, if they could just do right by us, just, just undo everything that you've done and just stop with the Nolan Batmans. <laughs> That's what... Well, that, that, that was what... You mean, wait, you mean the Affleck Batmans? What? No, well, I mean, oh, so retroactively have stopped with that. I yeah, yeah. Go back, undo, kill everything that you've done, then release Wonder Woman. Stay on top. <laughs> well, the idea. Well, I mean, obviously, we can't go back in the past, but Flashpoint was supposed to go back in the past of this crap and eliminate all of it. Well, you know, they're still making Suicide Squad too. Oh my god! Which, if ever a movie didn't need to be made, it's that. Right. Right, yeah, they need to they need to stop. That's that's enough of the DC for uh, for for this. I just I just had to bring that up because it was a, it was a very sad conversation that I had before the show. So moving on to the big sick, our movie for the week. Um, if you're not familiar with the big sick, the big sick, it's a uh, Kumail Nanjiani's like it, it, it's I guess a, it's a true based on his life. Yeah, I don't know. How like how, how accurate. sensationalized this is, but I'm sure. assuming the big points are basically true. Right. I love the. I do love the uh, the the subtitle. If you on IMDb that they have under the movie, it's as a an awkward true story, which is just really it's adorable because that's 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 what this whole this whole movie is. So just the uh, quick synopsis from uh, IMDb: Pakistani-born comedian Kumail Nanjiani and grad student Emily Gardner fall into love but struggle at their cultures clash. Uh, when Emily con- contracts a mysterious illness, Kumail finds himself forced to face his, her feisty parents, his family's expectations, and his true feelings. And great, great synopsis. That's what this movie is about, and it's really, it's really just following this guy through this, through this very, very awkward journey, which is what it says in that subtitle there. And that is one of the notes that I have written down. This, like, the entire movie is an awkward situation. See, the I felt like. It was more targeted. Like, yeah, there's a lot of awkwardness, but for me, the most like poignant awkwardness is is any time he's talking to her parents. Sure. It like comes to a screeching halt of awkwardness. <laughs> right. Well, it, it, that's just though it it builds in all of the other scenes as well though because like it, there's this this funny like even the scenes that probably wouldn't be awkward they have his his roommate in. Oh, this isn't a spoiler or anything. We'll get it. We, you know, we'll we'll lift the veil at some point. But uh, his his roommate is like the butt of all jokes when he is on screen. Yeah. And so, when the movie doesn't need to be awkward, it's awkward because of him. 
So I feel like it just carries awkward throughout the entire film. <laughs> but those are all like, haha, that was awkward. Like you brush it off. Like the right. moments where the awkwardness like are tangible is, <laughs> is I, I felt were really when he's talking to Emily's parents. Mm-hmm. Those are definitely the biggest ones. And and the probably some of the most memorable scenes from the movie, which are his his parents played by um Ray Romano and uh was it Holly uh Holly Hunter, right? The two of them are great together. They oh, phenomenal. They they kill it. They're they they play off each other so well yeah, in the movie. Great. Like she's like she's like a bulldog and he's like just this big lovable guy kind of and like <laughs> Right. I, I just I, I love how they're we we find out why they're at odds um, because of their you know something that that uh, Terry's done Ray's character and but they're still they're still very much a team so having that like that friction between them at the same time they're there together is it's it just is really like well done the way it's you know it's laid out because you even if there wasn't that original tension between the two of them that we didn't know about ahead of time just something as simple as a couple with different personalities who work together but are different people whose daughter is on the brink of death. There's enough tension and friction just there as they have different ways that they handle crisis, right? And then yeah. we find that on top of that is additional stakes of their own issues and their own marriage. Like, when you find, and like the way it was released well into the story, I thought was an interesting way to go about, like, you know, it was an interesting way to find out, like, oh, this isn't just that that's going on. There is like so much more on top of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, don't know, I like that. Yeah, it's 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 really good. I it, it's got it's got layers, <laughs> much like Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so what one of the things I'm, I'm curious about how you think about feel about this? I read some stuff uh, early on in the year about like, and it's it's fitting to do this movie now because there was talk about how this movie was snubbed from from the Oscars, and I I don't necessarily agree with that. I again. I want to put this out there. I really liked. I liked the movie a lot. I enjoyed it. I thought it was. It had. It had a lot of heart. It, it was funny. It had a really great story to tell. It was. It. It's. Uh. It makes it even more moving knowing that like at least part of this is true. Well, that's the thing is you know if you take out of the equation that this is a movie and just say okay like we get that some of the stuff was played up a little bit but just the basics of this story which largely would probably have to be true. It's an incredible story. Right. But, but uh, yeah, well, no, we, as, as far as it being snubbed, it, I guess it shouldn't be, I mean, I don't know, based on what you were saying before, maybe it should take the place of the Phantom Thread for Best Picture, but, like, uh, it, it shouldn't be... No, 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 best hang on. The, uh, this is exactly the point where I'm going with this. Is this? I feel this should take the place of Lady Bird, and I don't think Phantom Thread should be anywhere near the goddamn Oscars, but that's a different... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so burned by that movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that's the thing. I don't think this is a best, a best picture type of movie. Right. But if like Holly Hunter was nominated for like supporting actress, a hundred percent. Totally the Yep, I would I would agree with that. Or if like you wanted to give it like a best screenplay or best original, you know that that sort yeah. of thing, like totally would get that sort of stuff. Sure. Sure. I, I guess I, I don't think it. As far as I recall, I mean there might be some of the non. Um, publicized ones like ones that you won't see i don't know if it got any recognition at all but it's just i know that it's not it's not like it's gonna get costume design or like sound right. editing or anything I, it's just i know that it's on the like on the main on the main award ceremony it's just and i'm i'm okay with that i don't think it's like i, I don't feel like that that's wrong oh it's nominated for one oscar okay what is it for i'm um, clicking and finding out best original screenplay there you go there you go that makes sense i said that that totally understand that yeah and anyway, it's, it's both Kamel and his actual real life wife, who's not in the movie to the best of my knowledge, unless she played some extra somewhere. No, I don't. I don't think she was actually. In it. I know at the end they were, uh, or I watched like a little documentary thing afterwards, and uh, she was there. Um, she was involved with the making of the movie. I don't think she was. I don't think she played an extra or anything like that. I could be wrong. But uh, well, she, that's what I'm saying. She, or the two of them wrote it together. She's yeah. got the writing credit, but I don't think she was actually in the movie at all, other than. I do think it was kind of cool they showed the, the real life pictures of them at the end that of the movie. Cool. That was kind of cool. Now, I always love when they do things like that. 
the, so uh, should we just just so that we don't have to worry about tiptoeing? I'll lift the veil. I mean, overall, good movie. I would say see it. It's it's got a really great story to tell, and it's moving in a lot of ways. And it's it again, it's awkward. A lot of it's awkward to sit through and like and be a part of. But you're awkward with the character together. So it's it's just it's really. It had great. one of those cool mixes where it's like we have talked about that a couple times recently, where like with, with three billboards and even actually with the Last Jedi. Um, where things get super dark or super mm-hmm. serious, and then like you laugh, and it's like I feel bad about laughing right. because this is really serious, but also like that's a joke. You want me to laugh at that, goddamn it! Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna feel bad. I'm laughing at this. Right. It's got a lot of heart and a lot of humor and a lot of awkwardness, and it likes to mix all of that together at different points where you it, it makes you awkward and uncomfortable, but you enjoy yourself anyway. <laughs> But well done. So, uh, lifting the veil so that we don't have to worry about it anymore. Uh, the there's there's the awkward situations that arise in this movie are hysterical. So certain ones that I want to point out. Uh, well, one is the is the dinners at mom and dad's when oh, he's yeah. and we, and they're great. And like you get this you first, you you get your first taste of like the sibling rivalry between him and his brother, which the bickering back and forth, but the love between them is just great. Like the fact the that the first block of them talking, where it's him and the brother and the father talking, mm-hmm. is some incredible like family dynamic stuff. Where it's like, doesn't matter that they're a Pakistani family. Like, I've seen that exact conversation in my own house. Like, you know what right. I mean? Like, <laughs> right. But then, and then the the three of them making fun of the mom. Yeah. Which is which was it's just hysterical because she's she goes the doorbell rings she gets up ooh I wonder who that could be, and then. Uh, what does he say? Play by play, which is so great. Yeah, he like he doesn't he like bet one of them. Like I bet she says like, guess who just she was just in the neighborhood <laughs> or just dropping yeah, by. He goes, I will bet you in the next ten seconds the words. Oh, guess who just dropped in? <laughs> <laughs> I love that, and that's and that's and this kind of this starts off one of the one of the reoccurring awkward situations, and that's them trying to set him up and arrange his marriage, and he's just not having it. He doesn't he doesn't want to be a part of this piece of the culture and he doesn't feel comfortable with it and he's but he you know he's trying to be there with his family and be a part of the family but they're pushing this thing on him and it's so awkward and then you tie that together with him going downstairs to pray which had me hysterical laughing because he's just he's on his phone playing a game the mats rolled out <laughs> which is which is probably the best part about it <laughs> is that it's like he like went through the trouble of doing that but he's still sitting there waiting for the time to go by and then he comes back upstairs and just pretends that he took part in it and it's just it's just so funny like he just like he doesn't he loves his family he loves his parents and his brother he doesn't necessarily feel like he falls in line with everything that goes on with them and their culture but he's kind of abiding by it just to get to get through and be a part of their family with them She's going to say that they were just driving, they happen to be driving by, which is a total coincidence considering we live in a cold sack. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. But it just it's so, so funny. And again, him and his brother, the, like the, the bickering, but the love that you like the connection between the two of them is just so great. And the dad kind of cracks me up too, especially in those first couple of scenes, like mm-hmm. just like, his stupid little dad jokes and stuff like that. Like he's talking, to, oh, look at these jeans! How stylish these jeans are. Where it's like, you've like you've probably had that stupid conversation with your dad. I've had that <laughs> stupid conversation with my dad. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's, it's one of those like it just breaks cross like cultural bounds. Like so funny. The, the all of the joke between the three of them about the beard. You know, she, she says, oh, you know, Kumi, you should grow a beard. And the brother goes, yeah, grow a beard, like just like mine. And the father's like, no, no, you don't have to have the big beard like your brother. Just a nice beard like this. Is, look at this little beard. It's very stylish. Right? It's good on you. <laughs> and then he's talking about, uh, you know, oh, oh yeah. Did you know the cousin, whatever grew? He, you know, he married a, uh, you know, a, a, a white woman, and uh, they had this baby, uh, Dave. It's Dave. Dad. It's Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dave. <laughs> That's so good. Oh my god. That I feel like I've had. I've had similar conversations to that with my dad, with his with his accent and occasional, yeah, occasional word of applause there. But it's it's pretty great, <laughs> Dave. <laughs> but there's so I mentioned that the awkward 
so actually before I move on from the family, one scene in particular when they have the the girl stops by and they're all sitting in the living room talking and he's not gonna come he's not gonna show up. <laughs> it's, it's, but they're they're consistently saying that he's going to and then they start talking in their native language, but she understands it <laughs> and just makes the scene even know. more awkward. <laughs> it's so good. And that's again, that's the dad. You know, he gets on the phone and he, and yep. oh, he's talking and he says, I just totally faked that call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this is so funny. But that, so every every one of these, uh, the women that would stop by or that would be like, you know, that his mom's trying to set him up with, he would have their picture and he kept them in the cigar box. And this, is, this brings us to a, a particular scene that didn't really sit right with me. I feel like it's it's the reason for their breakup and their their like a, the bad blood between him and his eventual, you know, mate. But they they kind of that was really weird. Why did you just, why did you say that? I couldn't I couldn't think if they got married in the movie or not, but they didn't. They get married well, they, in real life. But they got married in real so life. I could, I could say it, but like I was trying to like to pick the right words and it didn't work out. Anyway, <laughs> um, but they, they their breakup essentially that happens right before this catastrophic event where she's in a coma. Yeah. Right. So it's it escalates way too quickly for me. Like yeah. I feel like it. I'm sure there was there was probably something there, or it resembles. A, a real thing that happened but that whole piece of it just didn't work just right for me because it was like if if either one of them used their words just a little bit it wouldn't have blown up to the proportion that it blows up in that well sense. you know what part of the problem was because i you know i actually i watched it last night that was the second time i saw it mm-hmm. i saw it last year when it came out um she says during that thing I get, I get what you're saying because I felt the same way the first time I saw it, and I still felt it the same way at the beginning of the scene. But mm-hmm. as I watched the whole scene again, I realized, like, okay, you know, what? I mean, like, they do explain it. Like, she, she lists off a series of red flags, and like, essentially, it was the straw that broke the camel's back. But the, I don't, I think it was one of those things where they told us and they didn't show us. That's probably the case. You know what? Because she, she lists off like four things during that thing like right. the two-day rule blah this that blah 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 but the thing is like the two-day rule conversation they kept having it seemed like one of those cutesy little couple running joke things right but then it becomes one of those so that's what i'm saying like they didn't show us that like we never sh- saw her actually bristle at that f- being a thing yeah earlier on so that's why i think that scene doesn't work that makes like, sense. I agree with you with what you're saying because I experienced it that way the same way with the first time I watched it. Mm-hmm. And I realized on the second time seeing it that it was one of those they should have showed us and instead they told us. Yeah. And I guess it, it's also they were trying to, you know, you're trying to fit it into like a concise block of time. So they, they guess that part of it kind of gets lost because they wanted to, I, the, the majority of the story they want to tell comes after all of this. No, I mean it's it's a two hour movie, although it never drags. No, for sure. But yeah, that, so that, that that piece was, and again, it's it's funny though because it, as much as it bothers me, I'm able to brush past it for for it to go where it goes. No, yeah, it definitely doesn't like break the experience. But I I agree with you. The first time I saw it, I, I actually felt largely the same way you did, where it's like that seems kind of like an overly ginned up controversy that causes this whole thing and to an extent i i still agree with you but it's all there they checked the boxes it just doesn't resonate with you emotionally you know what i mean yeah yeah i i would want to like in that scene done done the right way you feel like you're in the middle of the argument and you feel bad and for both sides but in yeah. in this particular scenario, I feel like you you're on the outside. You're like, guys, just talk talk it out for for a second here. <laughs> it comes out one of those things where it's like, I even felt to a certain extent like she's being ridiculous because mm-hmm. not like she found a bunch of pictures of like him with like a bunch of like nude girls. Like it's just headshots, right? Yeah, you know I mean, like if it was a bunch of like you know, if she went on his phone and found like pictures from girls of them like scantily clad and stuff like that or something like that 
it would make more sense, but like he gives a pretty reasonable. Now you shouldn't be mad at him for not being straightforward about that up sure. like before now, but like I feel like that merits a conversation, not storming off. Right. You know what I mean? Like if it would have been right. a long conversation and it became one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, like clearly if this is the way you feel, like we should take a break or something like that. But instead, it becomes this. It's almost like she she acted like she found that he was cheating on her, which is like right. really which was the case. Yeah, I feel like maybe that that's probably what's bothering me a little bit about it too. Is that it, that's that's definitely what it felt like. It was it was very weird. But meanwhile, we from the from our perspective watching this, we know that he ha- doesn't talk much about himself, his life at home, or his culture. Yeah. And y- you find this box, and like you say, it's not like it's like like strange thing. I mean, it it is strange from a normal perspective. Like, okay, he's got this box of pictures of girls. But if you take it with a grain of salt of knowing even anything about his culture without him telling you, and then the fact that he's secretive about it, I feel like that would lead to a conversation or even a heated argument, but not not her storming out like in that in that moment. That's then, what I'm saying. Merited a conversation of yeah. like, where do you see this going? If this is what's going on, you right? Know what I mean, not a right. You know. And, and that that is valid on her point. She has a reason to be upset about sure. the fact that he literally hasn't mentioned her to his parents, like that they don't know she exists. Mm-hmm. But again, I still feel like that's a conversation. But it's also a movie, right? Right, for sure. So we get we get thrown into this whole thing then, where he she gets you know she she goes into a coma based on I, I forget was it a specific? Do you remember what the illness was or whatever it is that she contracted that? Well, I know they basically said that it seemed most likely to be, like, MRSA. Okay. Uh, but then when they ended up going in and surgically removing the affected tissue, they said, oh, we should be able to do, like, a biopsy on that and come up with a better treatment plan. And they said it was inconclusive. So that part was a little confusing. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know, she had some sort of infection. Unique and- infection. And then what was making it worse was like kind of the icing on the cake was that adult onset stills disease or whatever. Right. But that was like something she was just like a genetic thing she was carrying. That wasn't actually what got her sick. It was just making it worse. Mm-hmm. So in the hospital, when we when we get this this terrible sequence of him like going through and like being there and doctors like kind of making him make a decision, which was an interesting one. And then him like being stuck and then her parents showing up. And then we get that first interaction with him and her parents and how awkward that is. And then her, the mom, she's just so fierce. The mom, which I yeah. love. She's just, she really does. Kill she's it. like a bulldog. Like, you know, she just like, she's not afraid to just like go at you. She's relentless. Like, right. Like there's, it's funny. Cause like there's, as soon as they come, you know, like she talks to her mom, like you know that she knows about you. <laughs> so whatever, whatever animosity she has towards you, the mom has it. <laughs> so, well, the funny thing is, he doesn't know at first. Well, <laughs> that we she know has that she, he fears it, but he doesn't know. Yeah. And then she says to him, "Oh no, she told us everything. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't hide things from us." Which also shot across the bow, like, "Oh, you hid this whole thing from your right. parents." Our daughter doesn't hide anything. I know everything. <laughs> right. <laughs> but she she really is she really is great and she commands she commands the scenes that she's in so much. That Which is that. funny because she's like a foot shorter than Ray Romano. Yep. And like you can see he's like physically intimidated by her in yep. a couple scenes, even though he has to literally crane his neck down to look at her. Which is and like she looks like a little kid looking up at like her parent. Like, Which is some really great physical acting on both their parts. Yeah. Like, really, really well done. Yeah, and like, like, well, he has the whole, like, restless, like, you know, he's, you know, he's tapping his, you know, he's doing a thing where he's tapping the, his legs, yeah. and she's like, you know, you're driving me crazy, or mm-hmm. he kind of, like, you know, he's, like, you know, plays with his glasses, and he's, like, <laughs> shifting around, and, and meanwhile, she's got, like, that death stare that, like, could, like, stop a charging rhino. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, and, uh, we, you know, you mentioned she's a bulldog, she's fearless, the, which, this is probably one of my favorite parts of the movie is when they go to the comedy club with him. Oh my god. And it is 
it, it's the best part. <laughs> it's it's so funny and and so uncomfortable because she's like laying into this heckler and it's it's so great. And then to top it all off, like so she's that the heckler starts and she's defending Kumail and she's like you know she's going laying in on this guy and she like she storms out. But not the, just not just defending Kumail. Like up until that point, everything she has said to him has been antagonistic or adversarial like right basically up until that point we've been led to believe that she hates this guy right and this heckler says something and like she's defending him to the death <laughs> right and it's it, it's weird because like and it, it's funny because she's got like you know the claws come out and she's like got this like mama bear thing going on like with with him like she's like protecting him and it's it's really great and you 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 kind of wonder like she she knows all the bad things she knows that um that her daughter was hurt but she also probably knows how much her daughter cares for this guy, so like that makes her innately like kind of protective of him. I'm I'm, I'm thinking in the scene, but what, just the the icing on the cake that is that scene though is the Ray Romano I got levels yes speech. Wait, he, the only time that he snaps because she does a few times, and every other time he like absorbs it, like just goes with the flow, takes the punches, and like it finally rises him to anger. <laughs> I would. Fucking kill you here! I got levels, man. <laughs> I got levels. <laughs> so good, so good. But that, yeah, that that scene takes it home. Like that's that's the best one for me. Like I, I would, I just want to go back and watch that clip over and over again. It's just so I the just interaction. She was like, you know, "Why would you say that? Why would you tell me to go back to ISIS? Do you want ISIS to have more fighters?" This, guy, that this guy's saying? recruiting for ISIS. <laughs> this guy's the ISIS recruiter after all that. <laughs> That's so good, and we got a. Uh, we didn't talk about uh, his his buddies, his comedy group buddies, which Bo Burnham, who I love, yeah, being in this movie, and then his his roommate, who is just he. Like I said earlier, he's the butt of all the jokes. Like they they all pick on this guy, like behind his back and to his face too much. And I feel like we all probably know somebody like that, which is which is oh, sad. <laughs> <laughs> but um and then there's uh was it mary right oh what's her name what's her real yeah. name let me look it up real quick uh ad bryant was, uh, yeah i don't know her she is so funny she looked familiar but i don't think i actually know she's her. on snl i believe yeah she's on saturday night live ah uh, that explains it but she she's hysterical and like the yeah. the cool and the two of them had, had like a funny like her and bo burnham had like a funny like they were like tag teaming everyone basically yep I, uh, I lo- that was actually a note that I had here is like, there's a lot of funny people being funny in this movie, and yeah. you have actually talented comedic actors doing comedy. It's just so great. Mm-hmm. Like, like just like they just know how to deliver inherently funny lines. I don't know, like, I, like just some of their stupid interplay cracked me up like throughout the course of the whole show. Yeah, the movie whatever. And then, oh, well, on top of that too, when they're not being funny and they're just delivering dramatic lines. You know, you get the Vince Gilligan. There you go. It's <laughs> it's it's so true. There's they're just they're really good at it. Yeah. If if they can make you laugh, they can make you do anything. I think was his statement, right? It's, yeah, I think so. Yeah. And it's it and just that's true. we it talked shows. about it like for two seconds when you and me were texting the other day, like in the post, like David Cross and Bob Odenkirk playing very serious roles, and they they, they fucking crushed it. Like they re- oh my god, they really do. They really. They really do. Actually, it's funny that you, you said funny people being funny. I have a I have a note that says I like the funnies. That's <laughs> that's what that related to. So there's a just a jump to a quick scene here. Well, back to back to the parents uh, in the cafeteria scene, which is something that you and I touched on before this this started. This is the other. This is there's there's two scenes that stand out to me. One is that is the scene in the uh, in the comedy club that we just talked about. The other one is this in the cafeteria where coincidentally the, both both of these scenes. Had to do with like racism and like Muslim stereotypes. <laughs> yep, yep. And, but in in this one though, the the parents are sitting at one table, and he's and uh, Kumel is sitting at the uh, like uh, in a distant area of the of the cafeteria eating his. And the dad the dad calls him over, and it's just like he's waving him over, and you can see the wife's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> yeah. But he's just like, "Ah!" And he, and he comes over, and there then then as soon as he sits down, 
I don't know about you, but I feel like I just got like three knots in my back from tension <laughs> from like from the scene alone, which is just like it's just so uncomfortable because we know like they don't have any real interactions before this, like or any any real conversations. It's really just hostility towards yeah. him. Well, hostility <laughs> and or like like giving them the situation like with the medical issues, like it's yeah. all like business and like this is the first time like they kind of like. Oh yeah, that's right. We've like been talking about how your daughter's gonna die, and it's like, let's just talk about things that are not that. Right. <laughs> like, and what was so you, for two seconds? Like, you, but you had you had one of the lines written down. What was the what was the line that starts off their conversation? Oh yeah. So after he like the uh, I always forget what Terry Terry's talking about his tuna fish, like is like trying to break the ice, and like they hit like an awkward pause for a second. And he goes, "So uh, nine eleven. I've always wanted to talk about it." With people. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I, 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 come in, I was like, you've never got to talk about 9 11 with people before? <laughs> He's like, well, y- you know. Y- you know. <laughs> it's so, it's, it's so funny. It's so uncomfortable. That, uh. Like, that... can there be a worse icebreaker type conversation? <laughs> no. Nope. But, and the, but then again, you say, you know, comedians be getting a chance to, like, being funny. It, his response, what, oh, I forget exactly, you had his line before. What is it? He, oh, yeah, he's, like, he's, like, he's like, so, he's like, so uh, yeah, what do you think about all that? He goes, oh, yeah, he goes, uh, well, Terrible. we lost 19 of our best guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> and they both, the, the looks on their faces are so great when he Your says that. and confusion. Yep. It's so it's so good, but this gets this kind of gets. Married, and then he like, says, "He says, I'm, I'm sorry, that was that was a joke. That's that's not funny. It's not, it's a bad joke. It's not funny. It's a terrible, terrible tragedy. I, I don't approve of what happened." <laughs> but so at the towards the towards the end when they're um when he's at the the batting cage with his brother though there's like a similar scene where like he's him and his brother are talking and they they're they're getting angry and they're getting loud with each other and the words out of context are are not sounding too great and there's like a family <laughs> behind them yeah. and it just like he, they apologize to them but it's just it's just too funny because it's, yeah, yeah, i feel like it's playing on that awkwardness like, i'm sorry like we're not plotting or something like that right. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good it's so it, it's it's well written the the jokes are they just keep coming in this movie it's really it's really funny uh, uh talked about talking about another like moment where it's like tension and payoff and like just funny shit and it's like the scene when he's basically like on the brink of snapping and like things are bad at the hospital and things are bad like after him forging a decent relationship with Terry and Beth like they kind of have a falling out over whether or not they should transfer her Mm -hmm. to a different hospital and they're not listening to what he has to say and Terry caved on doing this when they were supposed to be going against her with it and he goes to the Quick and Hot, the fast food restaurant, and he's trying to order an odd sandwich. <laughs> and he's like, "Can I have one burger with four slices of cheese?" Oh my god! And the, and the guy's like, "Uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry, we can't do that." And he just fucking snaps he and he goes on this ridiculous rant, and he goes, "What the fuck is this? We? You're making the sandwich. <laughs> Why can't you make me the sandwich?" He's like. So four burgers. He's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> and he gets out of his car and he storms up to the guy and like in the drive thru window and he starts throwing you. I'm sorry, sir. We can't. Wait, just you and me. I don't care about this corporate bullshit. Just give me this fucking sandwich. He's throwing the garbage can and shit. <laughs> that was a, you know what's funny? Like that scene is is hysterical, but at the same time, it's so sad because he's so frustrated and. Only again, I feel like only a comedian can pull that off. Yes, it just—it's really well done. I just, it's just, what the fuck is this? We man. Just but then, me. but then after all of that, it just de-escalates, and he's like, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry," and, and he's, he's like, up the garbage he's that he picking just the garbage. And, and the guy goes, uh, "So, how about I give you a burger and four order, four burgers and four orders of fries?" And he goes. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. <laughs> he just stuck his face with fries in the car later. <laughs> That's so good. I like when the when him and the mom bond over late night food. They just like order all sorts of crap. 
and they're eating they, while they're waiting. Not just that, but like they like kind of like bridge their gap a little bit, and he goes, "Do you want to stress eat?" Yeah, <laughs> she's like, "Yeah, I do." And then like the next scene is after they've already had a whole pizza, they're now eating like a shit ton of Chinese food and like yep. drinking wine and like scotch and shit like that. It's... So funny. There's a uh, another scene with Terry that that kind of cracked me up again. Funny because of the way it's delivered, but also really sad when you're looking at the picture as a whole. When they're in the bedroom talking when, about him yep. cheating. Yep. What like did say, you is... do? <laughs> what did you do? You <laughs> like that... fucking idiot! What did you do? It was like, like it's it's funny if you just take this, the line and him yelling and the, these two guys that don't know each other sharing a bedroom together because dad's crashing there of his girlfriend that like the whole the whole scenario is just. Not bizarre. Just that, but even like again, and this is one of those like funny people doing something funny thing. Like the way that scene before it actually takes off, how it starts when they're just lying there and they're talking, and he's like, "Yeah, I noticed. You probably noticed there's some tension between you know me and the, the wife." And, oh n- no, I, I didn't. Uh, and it just gets really quiet for a second, and then he goes, "So it's a pretty late night. We should just uh, yeah. go to sleep. We, we got to get up early." <laughs> and it's quiet for like six seconds, and then he goes. I cheated on Beth. He goes, oh, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, he's the whole thing is like, I think we're going to get out of this. And it's just like Pandora's right. box exploded. And he's like, he knows he can never escape from yep. this situation now. Well, this is happening now. Like, he's talking to this man that he barely knows who his wife hates him. And he doesn't really think that the guy likes him that much. And he's dealing with these awkward feelings of, like, realizing that he loves this girl even though they broke up and they don't want anything to do with it and he doesn't want anything to do with all that. And he's like, okay, and now this conversation has turned into where Ray Romano is expressing in extreme detail what it was like for him to cheat on his wife and specifically what his post-orgasm thoughts and feelings were. Yep. Yep. As he's describing the manner in which his orgasm went. <laughs> oh my god. Um. Uh, uh, what was it? Oh, the one man, the one man show. See, that was a kind of that was one of the few times where it kind of felt like it bogged down a bit. I agree. And then there's a piece that pulls that like pulls like, pulls out of that nosedive, and that is the when his brother's there. So like we we see the one man show twice. The payoff at the end was cool. Right. But the like whole scene earlier in the movie when she goes to see the show could have done with that show that scene being half as long as it was. Right. I yeah, I could I would I would agree with that. I think I do feel like that it is it the build up there is is kind of just to set the groundwork for that final scene with the final time they do it where his brother is there, which is may or may not be the case, but it does make that that scene more powerful. Yeah, and then he introduces her to his brother. Like that's it was really sweet. Like it was it was really cool to see that. Like to have that scene. Well, it was such a big deal too, considering this is shortly after he's been excommunicated from his family, right? And they've mostly refused to speak to him when he decides that no, you can't kick me out because I won't let you. And he just how great sits is that scene? Down though? Dinner and like he's got the little like talking points yep. and all that stuff. Yeah, and- it's that scene is awesome when he's he's just like. You're saying I'm out. No, <laughs> which is the gist of the argument. <laughs> like the only word uttered that whole time is when he like antagonizes the brother, and the brother's like, "No, fuck you!" And he's like, "Ah, see, I, I, I specifically put that just to get a reaction." It's not too virtual. <laughs> and st- other than that, no one talks the whole scene, and you can see that the father wants to talk, the brother yep. wants to talk, like the mother hates him but realizes she doesn't want to hate him, but she does, and. Yep. It's no one says anything, but then to see Naveed actually show up to the show and talk to him after the show, you realize that it probably won't be permanent, even if it takes a really long time to fix it. Right. And then you get you get an even more closure of it by the end, where the dad gives him the food that the mom made for him for his road trip. Well, it still felt pretty final because he's like, "I'm not allowed to. I've been told expressly I cannot hug you." Um, but make sure you text us when you get there. Right. <laughs> and then he says, goodbye forever. It's been nice having you as a son. 
But then we see at the end the pictures of the real life Kamal and his yeah. family, and his family is all there at the wedding. So yeah, no, it'll, I assume it'll work things out. work out, and you see the groundwork for that being laid. But man, that's got to be a long road. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. But I, I love. It's really funny too, because again, the the end scene of them leaving and their decision to leave and go to New, they go to New York, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, him and uh, what was her name? It, well, CJ was Bo Burnham's character, and Mary. CJ and Mary. Yeah, so him, CJ, and Mary are leaving to go, but it, it's it's very sentimental. Like they're they're packing up, they're heading to New York. They're gonna they're they're going for it. They're gonna make this work. And it, it and then the dad comes. All this stuff is is very sentimental. It could be it's really sweet, but because it's a comedy at heart. They layer on just the jab at that roommate who is just simply not invited. <laughs> well, that was the thing, is when CJ asks him to come and he says, what about Chris? And he says, um, yeah, there, there's probably not going to be room in the car. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was the reason. Like, you know, not we can't make room for him, but not that no, he sucks, it's just... No, there's probably not going to be room in the car. And they leave it at that. And nobody nobody fights him on it. <laughs> well, like, he does say something to him as they leave. He's like, you sure you don't want to come? And he's like, uh, no, no, I'm just going to I'm just gonna keep doing my thing here. I got a good thing here. It's so funny. So in the, in the end, I, I do I, like what they did or how, or how they told the story at least. I say what they did. If they, this part of it could be exactly how it went down, so I, I can't say this is how they did it. <laughs> but uh, when you know she she gets out of the coma, and they they decide to kind of go their separate ways, and eventually maybe they'll meet up again, type deal. And when she sees his set, when she comes to see his set and heckles him, and they have like that same conversation, just such a real. It's just a really great callback. Yeah, to, the way or, they mirrored it from the first time when she talks to him after the show. Yeah, it's it's very heartwarming. I really I, I I enjoy the way that they they fade they they like the movie like has a soft fade out. I feel like which is really a really well done way of doing it. And I like when I mean sometimes it feels kind of forced, but I actually like when it fits like that. Where something once you've seen it at the end, you see where the seeds of that were sown at the beginning, but it doesn't seem like foreshadowing at the time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you never would have picked that thing as being something that comes back full circle at the time. Right. Definitely not. I I I enjoyed it. Good good movie overall. Do you have any other any other notes, any other topics you want to touch on? Um No, I mean well there there's just like little things. Was, I did think it was kind of funny. We don't really get a ton of time with them together. You know what I mean? No. Like, we don't get a ton of why they were so madly in love and this and that. But that being said, when times are good, they're disgustingly adorable together. Mm-hmm. Like, just the like... Uber the thing? That was part of it. I actually had those as two separate notes. Like, the oh, post-sex really? Uber was hysterical. Really funny. Like, I was like... I'm your driver. <laughs> laughing out loud. And, like, she hits the call button. Like, oh, I'll probably just take an uber and <laughs> his phone ring and like he picks it up and she's like did you have that on the whole time he said i only checked it a few times <laughs> <laughs> that's funny what was yeah, the other adorable those, thing all those stupid little things like you know that like the, the next scene he's driving her home and she's sitting in the back seat and he's driving like yep just it's just a normal uber thing even though they're like making this like small talk and just all the stupid little things you know or you know, oh, well, um, we can't do this again. I can never see you again. I can never talk to you again. And he calls her 30 seconds later, and then he goes inside with her. And yep. all the stupid... I Actually, another one of those things was kind of a call-response thing. When the two of them are drinking the wine together, and they're doing the whole, like, thing, you know, oh, it's very fruit-forward, this and that. And then it's part of this montage of scenes with his parents, with yep. the parents that are on, and they're also there. Uh, yeah, very fruit-forward. Oh, nice! Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so silly oh man yeah yeah you're right it's funny they and what they're together maybe like i don't know a quarter a, an, a sixth of the film <laughs> to be honest, they they flesh out the development of 
the relationship between him and her parents much more than they do with him and her. Yeah. It's true. Which is, I guess, kind of weird, but, I mean, it worked. Yeah, it's also, I mean, it's a it's a slice of this portion of their life that they're they're telling the story of, so I think that's, that's probably, like, the point. It's just weird, because most love stories, you focus on them being in love and falling in love, not him falling in love with her parents. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, most love stories are about the love and what they have to do to overcome their issues and this and that. Whereas most of the overcoming is just his overcoming. We don't see her side of the journey, which to a certain extent makes sense considering she was physically removed from the events for a while. Cause she was, you know, in right. a coma. Um, <laughs> but it, like, you know, it's not solely his story that like, the two of them co-wrote the thing or whatever, but like, it just, it seems odd that it should be so heavily slanted towards his personal development and all that. But also, yeah. there are real world reasons why that would be the case. Right. <laughs> like, it might be a nitpick, but also mostly justified, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, it was just one of those things that, like, left me feeling odd because it was, like, shifted so heavily towards its favor. But at the same time, I get why that was the case. Yeah, well, what's counter to that, though, it is shifted towards him, like in his favor, like and like the focus on him the entire, like oh, what ninety percent of the movie, and then you get the the reality of it, which is, um, the last thing I remember is we weren't on good terms, <laughs> which yeah. is, and then it's like oh right, <laughs> and you but get sucked was, back like, into that. That was pretty cold. Like he walks into the room and she's like, "Why are you here?" Yeah, and like from her perspective, it's like. She had no idea he was here. Like right. they did speak briefly before she was put in the coma, but she may not really remember that much. Like right. she remember, may remember that he was there, but not why or. And she definitely wouldn't know the extent of what he went through and how much he was there after she went under. Right, and he and, went through this for like, how long? And she, for, in her perspective, it's probably like an hour <laughs> because yeah. you know she was out. So that was kind of heartbreaking when he said, she said that, and I'm like, like you didn't expect them just to be like, oh my god, we're madly in love right then and there. You right. know what I mean? Like we expected there to still be some level of struggle, but like that was a fucking like knife to the heart. Like, why are you here? Yeah. <laughs> and like he's been asking himself that for weeks, and like her parents have been asking that of him for weeks, and it's mm-hmm. like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Good movie, man. Good. Yeah, it's all movie. Glad we saw it. Cool. Well, uh, that's it for this week's and guys, episode. It's on Amazon. It was actually like produced by Amazon. If you have Amazon Prime. Oh yeah, you, you can. <laughs> you can check it out there for sure. So that's it. Uh, episode thirty-four. Thirty-four episodes. We're uh, we're cruising right along. Hope you enjoyed it. Check back next week, and uh, we'll probably shoot for doing Black Panther. Hopefully, uh, I'll be able. I, I should be able to see it by then. If not, we'll we'll fill you in with something else in between. Uh, in the next few weeks, we'll we will have. Black Panther, Annihilation, Red Sparrow, probably yep. Lady Bird and the Post in some order. Yeah, yeah. Lady Bird and Post are definitely solid on deck contenders because we both saw the Post and you have access to Lady Bird pretty easily. So, yeah. Cool. Well, until then, I'm at AEJ Costanzo on Twitter and Instagram. Al is at AlessandroB1187. Um, have a good week. Cheers. <laughs>